Hello everyone, my name is Yi um, Hong Phuc and uh, I come from Vietnam. Um, before I start, I just um, want to tell you a bit about what I'm wearing now. This is a traditional dress of Vietnam called Ao Yai. This is not convenient at all, but uh, I, wa <laughs> <laughs> I want to wear this because uh, so you feel a bit like uh, Vietnam. Actually, I have to think very carefully before I decided to wear this. I asked my friend, should I wear the out oh, yeah or not? Then he told me to do whatever everyone else does. So whenever a Western come to Vietnam, they wear a jeans and a t-shirt or a shoes, <laughs> which is the European style. So I'm here, I have to wear a Vietnamese style. So we change my style. <laughs> So today I'm going to talk about um, how to get contributors for your free and libre um, open source project from Vietnam and Asia. So this is kind of um, a challenge that most of the projects are facing at the moment. Um, the lack of developers or um, you, you come from many different projects here and do you know any like, Asian developers? How many Asian developers that you have? One? <laughs> None. And uh, we all know that most of the people live in Asia, right? <laughs> yes, we have like billions of people live in China, in Vietnam. We, have, we are just a very small country, but we have like 84 million people. So um, let's get started. Okay, so this is a summary of, uh, of a few points that I'm going to go through today. Um, let's start with... Um, a small introduction about myself. Um, I'm not a designer. I'm not an artist. I'm not a developer. Um, I study in marketing. And um, I got into the open source community since 2007. I attended a, an event in Hanoi called Fosbridge, which is an event that uh, connects the European open source company to the local companies. So I was there a translator. And then after the event, I got very inspired by uh, the idea of uh, sharing, collaborating uh, thing with people all over the world because well, there, uh, at that time, uh, there were so many foreigners and all handsome guys from the West, so I was very excited, so I joined the community. <laughs> um, and then um, after that, I, um, I moved to Singapore for my study. And um, in Singapore, they have a, a group called Linux User Group. This group uh, is very active, and the guys like, always have meet up every month, and they organize events, um, developer events, uh, free, free software freedom day, bar camp, you know, all this kind of stuff. And so I get involved, quite like, actively involved into the community of um, open source. Uh, then after that, I finished my study. I go back to Vietnam and uh, organized the event called Norm Asia in 2009. Um, at the moment, um, at the moment, um, I have a full-time job as a marketing manager for a local hospital, which is not so big; it's very small. I come from a small town, and um, I did a lot of translation for free software into Vietnamese and organize events, um, have with translating, translating a website and try um, Vietnamese article on uh, Wikipedia. So that uh, is a little bit about myself. Okay, uh, I will go quick to this. Uh, why a marketing student like me interested in uh, open source? Uh, the first reason is because I like to meet international people. I like the idea of sharing. Um, <laughs> And for me, like here, attending this event, I learned a lot about new mod modern technology and um, design also other languages. And um, another thing is working for open source projects give me the opportunity to be here. I got invited to be here because uh, I contribute a bit of, of, on the open source, stuff, which is very good for a girl. Let me come from um, North Korea, non city. And. Um, the last point I want to say, um, I'm very happy to be here. I really love the idea of sharing and study from each other. Yesterday, I, I attended a workshop uh, with the people from OSP. They, they spent like two or three hours showing us how to make a poster by 
command line scripture. I have never done it before. So they are very, very nice and friendly. So I think that I should like give something back to the community by having the talk. Uh, I try to help um, the project get more developers from uh, Vietnam as well as in Asia. Okay. Okay, this is um, a map of Vietnam. For some of you who don't know, Vietnam is um, a little bit below China, next to Thailand, Laos, Cambodia. Uh, this is Ho Chi Minh City, the um, economic powerhouse of Vietnam. We have events like Konom Asia or Force Asia will be this year, November 12 to 14, will be held in um, Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, this is Canto. This is a small city where I come from. Um, is uh, located by the Mekong River. Um, and this is the floating market in Kenta, which is very famous. Okay. Um, and this is a screenshot of uh, Gnome Asia 2009. Uh, we organized it last year in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Um, okay, so the very shy girl sitting on the on the right is me. Uh, we have a woman panel at Economic Asia talking about how can women involve into uh, IT or to uh, open source community. Okay, so next I will tell you a bit about the situation um, in Asia, free and open source in Asia. Okay, um, there are a lot of projects that are uh, widely used in Asia. I got to um, read from the screen. Content management system like Joomla, Rupo, or WordPress, embedded devices using Android, Firefox, and OpenWRT, server using Linux, com companies using Scream and Inkscape for services like GHP Vietnam, which is a very big company in Vietnam, and uh, they use Scream to making uh, personal manga projects for the Japanese people. Um, most of the people in Vietnam are using uh, Wikipedia, so we all involved in an uh, open source community. And um, this is a website showing that we use Drupal and free licenses for commercial websites. So actually, we earn money from the from an open source project, which is Drupal, and um, all the content are under Creative Commons license. Uh, this is another example using Joomla, and we also earn money from this. Uh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I recently founded a company that um, do enforce for ICT project marketing and consulting. So that's what we are doing. Um, so go to the main points of the, um, the presentation. Projects need uh, new contributors. Okay, um, I don't know if Ale is here. No, the other day I talked to him and he explained to me that uh, at the moment most of the project face, facing a challenge in the lack of developers. In the beginning test, there, there, there are like, usually there are many developers, but then later, later on some become less motivated as they have to take care of other things in their life, like their family or they don't see a lot of movement and just like, because if you don't see anything going on why you have to do it anymore so no one else even bother to care about it and some find other interesting projects or need to focus more on income i think that we all experienced it so there is a content needs of younger newcomers and why don't you look at the asian community there are many capable young people in asia <laughs> In, okay, many, many people in Asia are or open source, but still number of contributors seem very limited. So what is the reason? Mm, in Asia, we have like millions of people study IT, design, languages, and communication. Why aren't there more contributors, in particular students doing projects in the community? So to answer the question, actually we have to ask a lot of people. Uh, we ask people during Norm Asia, during force meets up, and uh, during education project we do like here in Berlin province. This is a project um, our company did like a few weeks ago doing um, research about ICT in the education on um, climate change awareness in Vietnam. 
And so whenever we have a chance to get out and we try to ask people why they don't uh, involve in the community. So we came up with a few points like this. There's very little research has been done about community in Asia. Asking potential contributors why they did not involve yet, I often hear things like, um, I do not know enough about free and open uh, source, or I would like to submit a PUT report, translate the system, but I don't know how to join the project and help. Or I want to help, but I do not have a lot of knowledge. So um, what is the solution? So I come up with um, nine top things that um, I would like to suggest to the project. I picked nine because actually nine is a lucky number in Vietnam. So nine means very rich. <laughs> uh, in China, I believe eight is a lucky number for your information. <laughs> okay. So top one is to understand background of your potential contributors and consider implications for your project. Uh, so what is that? So you have to understand the Asian people. The first thing you must understand is Asian people like me, like me are very shy. Like we, we, we feel that we, we are not confident in speaking English because it's not our mother tongue. And also another thing you have to, to be in consider is uh, the time different. Asian people sleep while Europeans and Americans are up. And um, I <laughs> just. I know it's very simple, but um, it's good that you need to arrange some meeting with developers all over the world, so you should make a time frame that everyone can join. Um, even some know a lot, they might still say they do not have the knowledge because we are very modest, even though we don't know, we don't know. Actually, we know a lot, but we don't say. Okay, so. <laughs> some contributors might be afraid to contribute and it uh, and discuss anything like code that is unfinished because in Asia the people like um, one developer he wrote a code but it's not finished yet he don't want to show anyone uh, but we know that development is always ongoing so if you just don't tell people what you're doing how can they help how can you finish you will be ne you will never finish and um, the next thing is uh, just about um, software project uh, it seems like Asian founded software projects do not often encounter mailing list files. Do you have this problem here in Europe? <laughs> like because um, we always, actually in Asia, we don't tell people exactly what we think. Uh, even though this guy wrote very shitty thing on the paper, oh, you are so nice, it's better if you write this way, we don't tell directly. So. Um, that is like the different culture between Europe and Asia. And another thing is in many Asian countries, parents pay a lot for the education of their kids. Some students may have to justify what they are doing, contributing their free time to a project for free. Uh, I don't know if you get free education here in Europe. You know, so in Asia, we have to pay, everything have to pay. Because the, go the government does not give us anything. <laughs> So come to the next uh, topic. After you, you understand the background of your um, potential developers, you need to identify some simple entry points that are suitable for contributors and make it easy to join. For example, create a join base on your project, on your website, in as many languages as possible. Define different to-do items for different groups. For example, developers, designer, uh, translator, and event organizer. Mention as well that people can help by offering support in forum or writing an article on their blog. Tell the advantages of people have contributed to your project. So if I would tell someone that what is the advantage of contribute to open source project, I would say you have a chance to go to conference overseas. So. <laughs> Uh, the last thing is consider the way to communication in your project. Do you use a lot of um, abbreviation and insider language, which is very difficult for uh, an Asian to understand? Okay, top three, make it easy to communicate. Adapt communication channels people are using already. 
So, for example, in China, I see a lot of people using Google Group, or in Singapore, they most of people use IRC. And for example, in Taiwan, people also use IRC or um, many developer blogs in Taiwan. And in Vietnam, the user community they mainly use forum. Uh, some developer they have mailing list, but most of the people are uh, still using forum. And I think that many developers do not like forum, but this is very useful for uh, the beginning level. Uh, set up meetings at a time that Asian Kutron, which is I told you earlier, provide guides for new channels like IRC. For you, like for people here in Europe, IRC is so old, but. Um, Many Asian people do not know or never heard about IRC, so you need to make a guidelines for the people how to join the IRC channels. Uh, top four is set up projects within your project and ask people to become project leads. Uh, so just set up the web project. You have many different projects, but inside the project, you can set up smaller projects so it's easier for people to contribute. Uh, for example, set up web projects, video projects, documentation projects, and uh, translation projects. This works very well with the um, LXDE translation project. Actually, at the moment, we have 120 active translators for the XDE project. Uh, make a wiki page and a forum page. For projects like design project, like we all designer here set up, pub uh, we can set up a public sharing folder on Dropbox, for example. It's easier to share big files. Uh, speak to people at the community gatherings and make the poster send the file to university and ask them to hand it up to inform the student. I think this is a very good way to promote your project to, um, to the student and the school, they would be happy to put up your poster because they have nothing to do. They don't have any poster in the school anyway. <laughs> uh, top five create guides for contributors. Involve designer, translator, writer to make guides and publication for contributors. This is a lot of work, but people need to know how to contribute. And uh, there is a general good luck opportunity, opportunities to meet up at conferences and community events compared to Europe or North America. Uh, in Asia, we seldom have this kind of meeting. So um, the, the only way that people can get information is online on the internet or through books. So it's, it's very helpful if we can have, if we can publish a, a book. I think that somebody um, at the conference, John, mentioned about having LGM book or something. I would be happy to translate it to Vietnamese. Um, okay, next point. Uh, translate your core website and documentation to other languages. Make a wiki forums available in different languages. So. So it's very so you um, for your project you don't know anyone uh, from how can, how can you translate to different languages if you don't know anyone in China or you don't know anyone from Vietnam how can you do this like it's quite easy because every country they have a Linux user group who who are very passionate about open source and normally people are willing to translate some free software to their own languages. So you can start with the Linux user group in um, that country that you want to translate your, your, your project. And for Vietnamese, anyone want to translate, I will be happy because like, I have a team of people uh, in the community that do translation for um, project. Okay, next. Mm. Oh, so this is exciting. John, and set up contest a support program and offer certificates. Um, we love certificates. <laughs> so I wish that I would be in here, I can have a certificate to bring back and show my parents or show my friend that <laughs> even, you know, we experience it in Gnome Asia. The certificate just say that the student participates in Gnome Asia and they were so happy. Because it means something when you apply for the job. If the people, um, your, your employer see that you are so active, you've been to many places, many conferences and half hour, they, 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 they are more willing to hire you. Um, start a contest or a court event in cooperation with local partners. 
Um, after Linux user group or local companies to contribute to the project or uh, to cooperate and help you, Google Summer of Cost is well known and everyone knows about Google Summer of Cost project, but you can make your own project as well. For example, you need developers in, uh, in China. You can go to um, Beijing or, or Guangzhou uh, to make a summer contest. And it's not so difficult because uh, everything is cheaper than here in Europe. Uh, with like 1,500 or 2,000, you can have a three-month um, summer contest to attract students. And for developers, um, you can give a gift like $200 for one developer or something that would be very happy to contribute. Or if you don't have the financial, you can just um, tell them that uh, maybe you introduce them to go to another conference or you can give a gift like t-shirt or bag and people would be happy and get more um, engagement to the project. Okay, lastly, the cons consideration. The challenge is often to have someone of your team to take to take care of the program and contributors rather than the funding. So I think that like for the project, for famous project like Kim Inkscape or uh, some other thing here, it's not so difficult to get funding like 2,000 or 1,500. Then you can have go to Asia and have a summer code or something and get more developers. Okay, so this is a picture of um, Beijing Linux group. And um, one laptop per drive project in Afghanistan and, and Vietnam are progressing well, offering training certificate for teacher and student. Again, they offer certificates for the teacher <laughs> just to learn something and you get certificates. So this is a picture of a young teacher showing her student how to work with the one laptop per drive. And this is the student from a fishing village in Ha Long Bay. Uh, ha Long Bay is one of the most beautiful beach in Vietnam, it's from the north. Uh, top A attend and organize events in Asia. Uh, why we should have event? Because personal meet up is always good. It, re it really has a personal relationship like what we are having now. Um, funny events are important to develop a sense of community. Um, after all, force and labor office is not only about getting kingdoms, but also about before collaboration and international exchanges, right? So I think that after, if you come to Asia for an event, you should stay a few days longer to meet up with the local people. And um, you can ask the local community to set up a workshop or support businesses working with your project. And if you cannot attend events, consider offering event organizer in Asia to submit a video pre presentation and to be available for a live video chat during event like we see earlier today. Uh, top nine, the last one. <laughs> consider add-ons on your project website to offer your community more opportunities. You can offer a job section for people who are looking for a job. Add a section based services to your site and offer active contributors to both for free. You can take an example of group or website. This is all the thing in the, uh, has been done on the website. And add the name of contributors as sub projects and offer them to put up a link to their site from the project page. Uh, this is a way to feature your contributors and give them better opportunities to get a job or to get to be well known around in the community. Okay, so this is um, recruitment opportunities during events. Uh, so I almost come to an end of my presentation. And um, if you have any ideas or uh, any successful story, you can share with us and contribute to the presentation. Maybe later. And so at the end, I would like to invite you all to Vietnam, uh, to the Mekong uh, Delta or to Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, the, there are a lot of people are waiting to meet you and we welcome all visitors around the world. And for my company, we would be very happy to offer you a free internet connection and our famous Vietnamese coffees for everyone. <laughs> so our slogan is better together. 
Um, and another thing I would like to mention is we're, we're having an event called Fort Asia in Ho Chi Minh City, November 12 to 14. More information can be found on our website, fortasia.org. And it would be great if you can join us at Fort Asia. Okay, so um, my contact, I can give you my contact later. Or if you don't come to the event, you want to go to Vietnam for a visit or something, I can give you a suggestion where to stay or which need the best place to go, all this kind of thing. Thank you very much for joining my talk. <laughs> Okay, I want to say something. I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the, uh, the opportunity to be here and special thanks to Femke and the constant people who have so much trouble helping me with the visa. Thank you so much. A pleasure. <laughs>now it's working. I'm actually just, just two weeks back from, from a stay in India where I taught about a dozen students about how to interact with open source projects. The interesting thing there was that these students are doing a project, uh, an internship uh, sponsored by a company for their university. And what I was uh, thinking is, what are the opportunities in the rest of Asia for starting this kind of project where a university uh, makes it possible for the students to do an internship or a project with an open source project because I think it would be possible for, for, for people like me to mentor those students but if their university tells them uh, you have this opportunity then it might be much easier for them to get started instead of doing things voluntarily. Yes, yes, it's true. It's totally true because it's always better if you have connection with the university because they can help you refer the student and when the teacher says student, you can have an internship at the company that are very willing to come. And in Asia, at the end of the final year, normally students have two, three to six months internship. At that time, they don't expect to earn a lot of money, but uh, they want to get experience, so it's very good if you have the connection with university. Um, to get interns for your project? Okay, so we, you don't have the connection yet, as I said. Um, yes, in India, maybe you can try to look on, online for the Linux user group in, um, uh, in India. And a lot of people who speak English in India, maybe uh, they can help you. And or you can directly contact with the university. Okay, thank you. Maybe also you will be around the coming days, probably not wearing your beautiful dress, but no, it's not we will know who you we know who you are now. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um,